Good afternoon, everyone. Mayong hapon sa tanan. Um, yeah, I can, I can hear there are some Ilongos and some Cebuans here. Cebuanos, yeah, that's right, and some Tagalogs as well. Yeah, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. And again, good afternoon to everyone. We'd like to welcome each one of you. My name is Pastor Eugene Steele. In behalf of the Nieri and Morgan family, we'd like to thank you all for coming today. For all your thoughts, your prayers, kindness that the family have received. We are here today to honor a very special person. A dear mother, a beloved wife, a good sister, a loyal friend, and a woman of faith. And I'll tell you more of that later on. Loida Nere Morgan. Before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our most gracious and kind, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for our lives. We thank you for all the blessings, the health that we have. We thank you for gathering us here, for bringing us here safe. And we are asking, dear Lord, that your spirit may guide each one of us as we celebrate the life of Sister Loida Morgan. We are asking that you'll surround us with holy angels that will be protected here from harms and dangers and accidents and from evil intention of men. Speak to us today. May there will be messages of hope, and assurance that those who are still here, who we are still alive, will give us the strength to go on with life, whatever trials and challenges we are facing right now. Lord, be with us this afternoon. We need you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. For our first hymn, Shall we sing, Nearer, my God, to Thee? To those who are able, may I request to please stand as we sing this hymn. Thank you. The lyrics will be here.
You know, every one of us has a beginning. So we'll be hearing from a brother of Loida about her simple story, her story, all right? And um, this video clip was sent to us a few days ago, it was given to me by Ati Daisy, and we'll be watching Gideon sharing the life story of Loida. Thank you. Good day and happy Sabbath, everyone. I am Gideon Imnieri, the brother of Luida Nieri Morgan. Despite of all the sorrows we bear today, still God is so good to us. I would like to share with you the wonderful life of Manang Luida. She was born on May 6, 1955 at Mayao Bailu of then Davao to Dorpe. She was the fourth child among the nine siblings. She attended her elementary at Bailu Elementary School and graduated her high school at Mungkayo National High School. She attended her college at Northern Davao College at Panabo with a course of midwife. During her college life, she was excelled in the field of gymnastics. She was a good performer as a gymnast. During her youthful days, she was an active youth leader at Bailo 70 Adventist Church. She also loves to play guitar. She served in the church in her youthful days. Manang Luida is very hardworking, adventurous. She spent her time working hard to earn money. Until time comes, her friend Lisa and Melba Pulibra introduced her to Lynn Morgan. He had communicated through Pinpal because of the long distance relationship. They fall in love with each other and Lynn decided to meet each other personally. And they decided to get married and settle for good in Australia. To conclude the legacy of Manang Luida, for thoughtful, generous, <coughs> kind to her family and friends, and will remain in our hearts and minds till Jesus comes. Junior. That's all. That, uh, Thank you. Yes, today is not just a memorial service, but we're also celebrating her birthday today. I will be sharing to you some portion here, some Bible passages, and this will give us hope, and this hope also, Ati Loida has been clinging to this hope to this blessed hope. If you get your Bibles with you, you can open that with me in the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, verses 13 and 16. If not, it's just here on the screen. In verse 13, it says, But I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, 
and the dead in Christ will rise first. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 50, we'll just have it there until 50. It says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all asleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O haze, where is your victory? Now, I will call on some friends of Atiloida to give some speech from your eyes and how you see Atiloida. Maybe I call on first um, Karen, Karen Zabieg Gala. And after that, there will be another friend who will be doing a speech. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Dear Loida, to have known you over the past 28 years has been a privilege. When I first met you, you were squatting over two bricks in a grill outside the caravan cooking your lunch. And I was impressed by your ability to fit into the bush, into your new home in the bush at Roaring Beach. You came to love and protect that bush in your time here. You were always a welcome face at gatherings of our community. Over the years, I saw you as a very devoted wife and mother. You faced challenges along the way with love in your heart and always a smile on your face. Your dedication to looking after Andrew and Len was admirable. Your love of gardening was something we shared and your hard work around the property was enormous. Your beautiful garden was a place of refuge for you in harder times. The citrus trees, a connection to your birthplace, I'm sure. You developed strong friendships, not only in the Filipino community, but with the Roaring and Peninsula people. We wondered how you kept going. And as you got towards the end of your life, I realised that you had such a strong faith and it was this faith that got you through. You were always positive and happy. And towards the end, you stayed sharp and clear in your mind. I thought you showed great courage how you refused the morphine as you wanted to keep clear in your mind. And when I asked, how are you coping with the pain? You said, I just have to look at it with my mind. You told the doctors you were stubborn, but I believe you are a strong woman and you kept your faith. To see the relationship between you and Daisy was heartwarming. You shared your tears, your laughter and your stories and I know that brought you great comfort. The freedom you had towards the end was well earned and you told me you were okay and you were prepared. It was an honour, Loida, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart 
and may you rest in peace. For Daisy, love and gratitude. The, na the agony is so great, and yet I will stand it. Had I not loved so very much, I would not hurt so much. But goodness knows I would not want to diminish that precious love by one fraction of an ounce. I will hurt, and I will be grateful to the hurt, for it bears witness to the depth of our meanings. And for that I will be eternally grateful. Thank you, Karen. And now, may I call on Annabelle and Maggie, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Nice to see you all, it's so lovely. Okay. Sad. <laughs> well, with due respect to everyone, most especially to our dear friend Lloyda, sister, her sister Daisy, her beloved son Andrew, whom she dedicated her life. Good afternoon. We're here to remember her as our friend who was always ready to greet us with a smile and was always happy to be with us. We've known each other for over 30 years and during this time, I've never known her to display any aggression or anger. She never complained about the situation, no matter how challenging it may have been. Ah, sorry. She was always ready to laugh at our many jokes we shared during our get-togethers birthdays, and the various catch-up that we had as a support for each other. I remember she was learning to drive, and her husband, Len, would sing in the passenger seat during this time. How I know was because when I caught up with her in childcare, I was, I was taking our children. I heard an, a voice coming from the basketball room. Then I said, what's that noise? She laughed and laughed because I should have known. This is the operatic voice she's got accustomed to from her husband, she deceased her dear husband, Lynn. We would always cook way too much at our gatherings because we forgot and we left behind in the Philippines the many extended families that we love. There is one, this one special occasion when I invited her to my eldest daughter's wedding. And she enjoyed having long conversations with my son-in-law's families. Yes, she was a very enjoyable companion. She's very much part of our families. We will miss her very much and she will leave a big void in our lives. The many fruits, plants from her garden, the bantam chickens, the eggs she shared with us, 
she would call in with pra she would call in with us, her, her friends, and bring with pride whatever produce she had. The thoughts and love that came with this were immense. I could go on more and more. I could go on and on. But it doesn't stop. I have so much admiration for this lady. She is a saint. Thank you very much. Thank you, Annabelle. I will have a um, photographic montage here. And there are some people who have given some photos with you and um, at the Lloyda are together, were together before. And so today she has shared this with me and scanned some of those. And you'll be seeing also some, uh, a couple of videos that um, she was playing her guitar. So hope that you enjoy this one. Thank you.
Yes, we'll be together again. Um, I'll share more of that later on. Now, we would like to ask the Hobart Church Plant um, ladies to please come and um, render a special music for us. The title of the song is Until Then. I would just like to read to you the lyrics of the song. As we don't have it here on the screen, it says, My heart can sing when I pause to remember. A heartache here is but a stepping stone. Along a trail that's winding always upward, this troubled world is not my final home. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy, I'll carry on. Until then, the day my eyes behold the city. Until then, the day God calls me home. The things of earth will dim and lose their value if we recall they borrowed for a while. And things of earth that cause the heart to tremble, remember there will only bring a smile. The third verse says, This weary world with all its toil and struggle may take its toll of misery and strife, but Christ will come to take me home to heaven and be with him for all eternity. That's the time that we will be together again. Yes. Not just with Ati Lloyd, but with, the, with our family and loved ones who have rested before us. Please hear and contemplate with the lyrics and the music of the song. Thank you.
That was a beautiful music. But before I give the message for us today, I call on Ken Morgan, and he said that he will give a little speech before the message. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Loida mastered an unusual <coughs> Christian principle, gift. Godliness with contentment is great gain. She had a lot to put up with and she was cheerful, faithful, loyal and did hear the Holy Spirit through it. Uh, I was late <coughs> through illness and travel difficulties uh, for the funeral of my father and it went for two hours. She said, no, Ken will be here. So I rocked up. I was wobbling about a bit when I got there but there somehow and uh, figured it out in the end. There was a bit of help after prayer but even so we got there and uh, she waited and that was because she did hear the Holy Spirit. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Ken. Shall we bow our heads in four words of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the memorial service that we have today. It gives us hope, gives us even joy to our hearts. Just like the hope and joy that Ati Loida has felt, had felt, Lord, has felt before she passed away. Oh Lord, we are asking that you guide us with your spirit as well, that we can learn from you and that we can listen to your still small voice. Be with us right now, in Jesus' name, amen. The message today will just be short. You know, Lloyda believed in the second coming of Jesus Christ. She believed Jesus is preparing a place for her, for her family, her friends, and to each one of us. You know, when I visited her in the hospital last week, that was Friday evening when Auntie Daisy rang me, I think, um, yeah, messaged me if I could come and anoint Auntie Loida. And I said, I will be there between six to seven. So I went there before seven o'clock. She was there. Lying on the bed, sleeping, and a Daisy woke her up. And before we prayed together, before I anointed her, she was even she was already praising God, giving glory to God. She said that she trusted the Lord come at me, whatever happens. In John 14, 1 to 3, I would like to read that to you. I will be reading in the New King James Version. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And now, I just want to let you know that this is Jesus talking to his disciples, reassuring them. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Dear Lord, I believe, again, the second coming of Jesus. Her heart is not troubled. By the time when I was in the hospital, she's not troubled at all. She believed in God. She believed in Jesus Christ who died for her. For each one of us. For us to have hope and a future. She believed that Jesus is preparing a place for her up in heaven. That he is coming again to receive those who believed on him, including her. We know that there will be a second coming of Jesus Christ because it was told to us in the Bible, in the word of God, in the scriptures, as his first coming. When, she, when he came to the earth as a baby, lived a sinless life, ministered to those around him, and died for the penalty of sins. So we could have, so we can have a chance to be redeemed. When his earthly ministry was finished, he had to depart from them and be carried up into heaven. That's in Luke 24, 51. His disciples watched as he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they, the disciples of Jesus, looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who has taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. That's in Acts 1, 10 and 11. Yes, Jesus is coming again. He said it himself. The promise is sure and recorded. He will return. The blessed hope of Jesus Christ return. Lloyd's hope is anchored in this. She did not fear death, for she knows Jesus will resurrect those who died in the Lord. And that's what I have seen in her eyes that Sabbath evening, that Friday evening. While the world has experienced events that affect every part of the globe, this will be an event the entire world population will experience together. For every eye will see Jesus coming out from the clouds of heaven. Every eye, that means even the blind, will be given sight, you'll never know. His second coming will be literal, global, and glorious. A joyous occasion as Jesus comes back for us. And we can know that this signals the end of an age of a sin-riddled world. As described in the book of Titus, this is the blessed hope. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. My brothers and sisters, my friends. That night when I anointed her together with Auntie Daisy. She fully gave her life and will to the Lord. She was praising the Lord that night. She accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. How about you? 
how about us? To those who are still, those who are still alive, are we ready? Lloyd was ready to meet Jesus when he comes back again. I hope and pray that the blessed hope that Ati Lloyd had will have it in our hearts from this day on. God bless each one of us today. Um, before our closing hymn, there will be words of thanks. In behalf of the Daisy, I think Karen will do that. Thank you, Karen. On behalf of Daisy and all her family, um, and thank you to Pastor Eugene and to everyone who's here today, Daisy would like to say thank you with all her love. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. For a closing hymn, let us stand and sing Abide With Me. Thank you, our great God and kind, loving Heavenly Father, for the blessed hope that you have given to each one of us 
through your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, on the cross of Calvary, in order for us to have victory over death. Thank you for the assurance that you have prepared a place for each one of us up there in heaven. And thank you for the example of Adeloida that she has given her life and will to you before her last breath. Help us at to wait for the last moment while we still have time. We don't know when would be the an uninvited guest, which is death, will come to us. Help us all to be ready from this time on. Guide us with your spirit. And may you live within us. And work in our hearts that we may have that blessed hope that Ati Lloyd had. Forgive us from all our sins. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Please stay by for a little refreshment there at the back. God bless each one of us. And have a good day. And thank you also for those who are watching online. And we will be posting also another video um, with a better quality if you, if you wanted to watch later on. We'll be posted it online. Thank you. Well, God bless.